Um, okay, welcome everyone to um, the demo day for batch number 1177 um, of the Y1. Uh, it's been an intense last few weeks for all of the students um, sitting here, and so I think we can all just now take a breath and the knowledge that it's all over. There's some late nights, some arguments, some changes, some bugs, some stress, and now all of the, all of the things you've learned in the nine weeks, all the hours you put in, um, this is the culmination of that. Um, and then, yeah, it's going to be a bit weird, I guess, for you to go back to normal life or not have to read every morning and learn new things and, and, and struggle through a day of coding. But, yeah, I just want to give a um, big congratulations to all of the students and all of the teams. We can just give a round of applause to everyone here. Yeah, I just want to say a few thank yous before we start, um, specifically to Marco and uh, Scooter at the back, um, who taught the students from the beginning to the end. Scooter started off teaching here on day one, and then took a nice little holiday in Barcelona, and then um, chose to came back, come back to help um, the students finish the projects. And Marco um, very kindly agreed to change his life plans and in the space of three days, um, up and end his life in Bologna and come and live with us for six weeks. You can see by the smile on his face that he's been having a really good time. Um, so yeah, thank you both for all of the time and commitment and knowledge that you transferred over to the rest of the class. And I think on behalf of everyone, just want to thank you specifically. So thank you guys. Also to the team around me who uh, supported me through this, Kiki over here, who spent a lot of time helping me manage the batch, Leon at the back there, um, always my right hand man through this whole project, um, through thick and thin, um, Barusha, whose anniversary is today, so she's not able to join us, but she uh, runs Red and Ghetto and is in charge of um, uh, the White One Ghetto as well, Laura, who is sitting in Morocco, who spearheads um, the White One Africa. Spends a lot of time helping me get the project to where it is, and the team at Honoris who basically made this whole project happen. So thank you to everyone here, and then everyone else for coming through to spend your Friday afternoon watching the students' presentations, everyone who's here, and I think there's quite a few people online. Some of you here are joining the next boot camp, and some of you online are also joining the next boot camp. So let this be a little indication of what you're able to learn from having no experience coding to giving it all in nine weeks, and uh, it's quite incredible what you are able to achieve in such a short space of time. So thank you everyone for making it. So the order of events, um, we're going to have three presentations. Um, each of these presentations is a final project done by a group of four of these students um, who came in, as I said, with no coding experience and from the beginning learned how the back end of um, a website on a web application works, learn how the front end works, and over the last three weeks have spent their time putting that knowledge into application and building these projects from scratch with ideas of their own, with um, the help and guidance of myself and Kiki and Scooter and Michael, but largely this is their own creation, um, and I'm sure you see how incredibly proud they can be of what they have achieved in this space of time. It's required a lot of work and a lot of dedication and a lot of time and a lot of struggle, um, so, yeah, it's remarkable what you guys are going to witness now. So, I hope you enjoy, and after that, we will be heading upstairs to have some drinks and um, some nice, delicious vegan sushi, and um, a chance for you to speak to the students about their experience. And for you guys who are joining in a few weeks, you know, ask for some hints and tips whether you should bail or stick it out. Um, but, yeah, this is kind of your last shot there. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to start with the three projects. The first, project we have is called Connect Trivia. Okay. In this group, we have um, Jono over here, whose um, uncle is actually one of my favorite DJs, and um, he is one of my favorite death metal fans. Um, we've got Sarge over here, who's joined us all the way from Durban. Um, Campbell, who's given up uh, his potential career as an Irish cricketer to uh, venture into the world of coding. So thank you for gracing us with your presence. And Josh, who's taking time out of his life in George to um, spend time be living in Wellington 
driving through here every day, putting a lot of hours. So that's the team. Um, and yeah, this team is actually, so when you code, you code lines and you push it onto the website and then those, those like code, that code makes things appear and, and do stuff. Um, and this team um, has been the most efficient committing the least amount of code in the most efficient way. Not always the most code is the most efficient, but these guys have managed to build this whole entire app with the least amount of code, which is testament to your efficiency and your project management, so well done on that. And the app is a really cool um, take on trivia. Yeah, communal trivia, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna take it away and hand over to Campbell and Jono to fill in. I have to turn this on. Okay. So, hi guys. My name's Rick and I'm a scientist. And being a busy scientist, I often find very little time to do the things that I enjoy, such as playing games and hanging around with friends. But lucky enough for me, I've come across this cool new app called Connect Trivia that allows me to indulge in some general knowledge questions and play with my friends all in one place. Um, the app is kind of like Wordle, where every day 10 questions are randomly generated, all with different difficulties. Um, all players answer to the same 10 questions, but they can answer it in their own time throughout the day. Um, but for me, as a busy scientist and having a long day in the laboratory, I think it's time to unwind and relax and finish the rest of my questions before they reset at midnight. So far, I've answered seven questions, and I've still got three more to do. So it's time to log into my favorite app and play some trivia. For this question, I'd like to open it to the audience. So please don't feel shy. If you know the answer, you may shout it out. So what do the initials JK stand for in the name JK Rowling, author of the Harry Potter books? Anyone knows? Yeah, OK. So we'll We'll go with that. <laughs> Smash it. Smash it. Well done. You guys have got it. Um, so now it's time to move on to the next question. The cool thing about this app is that it offers you three lifelines to use that help you answer a few questions, kind of like how it is in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So I've got two questions left. I may as well use my 50-50 lifeline that gets rid of two randomly wrong answers. Um, so for this question, what was the first war in, in the 1860s, if anyone has an idea? Tuxedo. Uh, <laughs> tuxedo, I heard? Yeah. Okay. He's got the first one right. So I think he's pretty intelligent. So we'll go with what I said. Uh, look. <laughs> cool. Now we've got 9 out of 10 correct. We are smashing it. We are on a roll. I actually have no idea what the answer to this could be, and I still have an extra lifeline. Um, I actually have a really good chance at, of getting 10 out of 10 questions correct, which will allow me to unlock the rarest badge in the game. So I'm going to use one of my lifelines, which is Ask a Friend. And here I'll be asking my friend Morty for some help to see his insight and if he knows the answer to the question. Hey, Rick. Mom's looking for you. Uh, do you know what it's about? No, but she's pretty mad, so good luck. Ooh, okay, I'll go check it out. Oh, and by the way, I've asked for help on Connect Trivia. Okay, cool. I'll have a look. Oh, hi, guys. Um, has Rick been telling you about Connect Trivia? It's really cool, right? Um, I've only registered today, um, and I've only got Rick as a friend. Um, but he asked me for help, so let's go and have a look. So I'm going to go and check out in my notifications and go and click on quick, uh, Rick's request for help. In which country would you find a Waco Historical Park? I, I'm going to go with Thailand, so I'm going to write him a little message and let him know that it's Thailand because, duh.
Cool. So now we're going to go and have another look at my leaderboard, which, if you saw, it's looking a little bit bare. So I'm going to go and add some friends now. Um, I have got some friend requests, but first, I've got a very good friend of mine, Bird Person, who I want to add first. So I'm going to go search for his name, and then click the Add button. Um, and this is now going to send a request to him, and I've obviously got to wait for him to reply to it. Um, but I have got some requests I want to sort out. And Summer, Beth, and Jerry are very good friends of mine, so I'm going to add them. Mr. Meeseeks, Mr. Meeseeks and I don't get along very well, so I'm just going to decline and leave him be. Cool, so let's go and have a look at my leaderboard. It should be a little bit more populated now. Awesome. As you can see, they've all answered. They're, they're answering a little bit worse than Rick, but I mean, everyone does trivia at their own pace. Um, so let's go and get some points of my own now. So which chemical has the formula N2O? Anybody? Let's try nitrous oxide. Nice, well done. Cool. Let's try another one and see what we're going to get. Jeff Goldblum plays the role of which character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? This is a little bit tough. So let's, let's use one of, our, one of our last lifelines. It's called Ask the Players. And this basically goes and checks what every other player has answered and gives me back the best one, uh, or the one that's been asked the most. So I'm going to go with the Grandmaster since that's what the majority have done. So we'll see. Well, that's great. So people are smart. The majority is the smartest. Which is great news. So let's try it. Maybe another one. Let's see what we get. Which boy's name is also the um, name? Morty. So everything's all good. Mom thought that my experiment blew up, but it was actually yours. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. But hopefully Morty managed to help me out while I was gone. So you're going to go check it out. So as you can see, Morty's told me that the answer is Thailand, and that is pretty simple. So we're going to trust his instinct and go with what he says. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we have smashed it. We have got 10 out of 10 and earned the famous badge. So let's go check that out in our stats. I love it when I see all greens in my results from today, but even more when my all-time stats are looking good. But most importantly, I love going to bed knowing that I've earned the famous badge and I can show it off to my friends being a brainiac boss. So my questions today are finished, but I'm absolutely buzzing to get to answer the next set of questions tomorrow. But before I wrap up, I'd just like to thank my team, Josh, Sarge, and Jono. You guys have been absolutely instrumental in helping me create this app. And to the Loagin TAs for this um, incredible experience and opening doors into our future to come. And to all of you sitting here today for helping us get 10 out of 10 on our question. Thank you. Can I take it? Take this out. Yeah. Next app is called Journo, and the four members of the Journo team are Kirsty, who's taking the time out of surfing and play to come and spend um, uh, the two months with us coding. Uh, we've got Oscar, who's flown all the way down from the UK, specifically for the boot camp, and to spend a bit of time in our beautiful mother city. Um, we've got Jack, who is actually also part of the team, but currently stuck in Portugal, 
having had visa issues for the last two and a half months, which is really Sarah, who's come with us after several years in China, to learn how to code. Catch them. Um, so thank you. This app, Journo, wins the award for the most lines of code pushed. With 16,522. <laughs> um, and, and Oscar wins the badge for the most commits made. So the most committed individual here. Well done. Um, yeah, so, without further ado, I give you Journo. Mike. Sorry, everyone. Hey, yeah. Cool. Good Thanks for joining us today. I, I'm Percy, and I recently signed up to this incredible app called Journo. When I was younger, I was a bit of a flyby now, casual planner. I never really had a structured journey to my travel itinerary. And a friend of mine the other day, while I was walking on the prom, told me about Jono. So I decided to sign up, and I planned a couple of trips. And today, I'm going to showcase a little bit about it. So the about this is that it uses AI technology to use my preferences and generate a whole bunch of tailored itineraries for my upcoming trips. So these preferences I can change on after sign up as well, but for the time being, since I've been vegan for the last month, it's really been a struggle, but I've heard the health benefits. My budget's been a bit tight since doing the wagon. I love cultural things and hiking, which will be my escape. I'm going to stick with my preferences. So let's go ahead and plan this trip. Yanela, I am so confused as to where to go, and this boot camp has been extremely stressful. So I'm planning a trip for the end of April sometime for a weekend. Have you got any suggestions for me? <laughs> <laughs> Table Mountain, anyway. I mean, I do Table Mountain quite often, being from Cape Town. Lisbon, amazing, thank you. Always wanted to go to Portugal, haven't quite made it yet, but I've heard it's great. It, the best part about this, and from what I've used before, is that, I mean, I find often when you're doing Google searches, it just gives you your top listed activities as opposed to ones that you would actually really want to do. Uh, it sometimes does take a little bit of time to load. I think that's just the back end trying to get going. But I love the layout. It's also become like a very one-stop shop for me to use this app uh, because everything can be done from the get-go. So it's popped up a whole bunch of recommendations. I like the sound of Vigano. Vigano, it sounds fun to say. Vegan friendly and has burger and wraps, which are two of my favorite things. I'm going to add it into my trip basket. As you can see, I'm quite a visual person and I like knowing where I'm going to be going in the area. The app allows for me to show, or shows me where on, in Lisbon it's going to be. I'm now going to look at a bit more about places I can explore. So explore is almost like a feature of the app that just like gives a bunch of random events that could be happening or things that I could be doing that maybe I haven't specified but could enjoy. Take a tram ride. I haven't been on a tram since I was very young and it sounds like something, one of the oldest trams and very unique. So why not? It's added in there. Do, so do is often activities that are tailored to my preferences. I explore the Alfama district, going to add that one in, love museums, going to add in the tile museum, I've also wanted to be an interior designer in a past life, so hey, why not? Let's plan. We can. I often enjoy also leaving a little bit of spontaneity, but my partner would really like to do more while he's sitting here, so, you know, <laughs> a few domestics every now and then, but we get through it. <laughs> so, I can see now, so basically what this does for me is it generates an itinerary for each day using the things that I've added into my trip basket. And as a South African, I often have issues with my visa, so it shoots out a whole bunch of like tailored visa recommendations. 
it gives me a packing list. I don't always follow it because I'm a little bit of a last minute packer, but it's a great feature that a lot of my friends use the app and often use. And a very important one since times are tough, budget. One of my favorite things is as well, I mean, often you don't really know which like, currency is used. It gives you a bit about the currency, attractions that can be done on budget friendly. Uh, it's also important to kind of note that because we are using AI, sometimes the recommendations aren't exactly the same or don't follow the same flow, but tend to one they are very informative. I am now very happy with the selection I have, so I'm going to add it to my calendar and export it to my current calendar, which I can then share with my partner, who will tend to want to add a few things onto it and review. No, it's because we've also invited our friends, uh, Sarah and Alina, to come and join us. They, Sarah was part of the boot camp, and Alina's been down from Russia, so we thought, why not you know, add a few people into the trip? And then what I can end up doing is saving the note for later. So in my navbar, what I'm going to do is go and preview a couple of post trips. And what one of my favorite features about Jono is not only is it a one-stop shop in terms of viewing all of your trips and creating, but you can actually go back in and almost create like journal entries. So I used to be one of those people that used to carry around a diary, which I never used to look again. And I find with technology, it's been quite an incredible thing to store notes and diary entries in one space underneath the trip boards that we have created. So this was on past trip from Egypt. Another incredible feature is I'm not always great at remembering certain names or places I've come to visit and places that have been recommended to me. You know, you're often in and out. So what you can do is favorite them and then share them with friends later and it all gets recorded in your trip board for a later phase. So as I've spoken about, I sadly have to go and make a visa booking because my green member isn't going to allow me to get to that trip and lines are long, time is short. Since I've also been vegan for a month, I have heard that there's vegan sushi coming up and yeah, I cannot wait to go to my next trip. So thank you all for listening and for being here today and thank you for... Yeah, well done to Team Journo. They've put in a lot of hard graft over the last few days. Um, they've, they've been using artificial intelligence, um, chat GPT, which um, hopefully is an indication that it's not all doom and gloom, that it has many um, positive benefits. And this is an app that I would personally like to use because although I don't like to plan, I think planning, get, planning my trips can definitely um, streamline them and allow me to experience more of the city. So. Our next and final group um, is called Soiree. Um, the team members are Abby, um, whose um, baby has spent half its life here on <laughs> campus. Um, uh, Mo, who's joined us all the way from Kenya to learn how to code, among doing about 16 other courses at the same time. The man's work ethic is, is incredible, and he's going to be doing great things in his life. Um, Yonela, who I have the pleasure of seeing every day, and he blesses me with his positive energy and beautiful smile. Thank you for all that you brought to the boot camp over these past two months. And Jess, who I think within the batch is by far the hardest grafter and most committed um, coder and has just brought great vibes organizing after, after hours events when I was meant to be doing that myself. So thank you for, for stepping in there where I, where I dropped the ball. Um, and this, this batch, or this group, sorry, um, they made the most commits, so they were the most committed batch and most dedicated, spent the most hours on campus, and I can see, I think you'll be able to see that the fruits of their labor really um, paid off. So without further ado, Abby, Jess. I'm Eve, and I've been in the events planning industry for quite a while now. Um, and I, I love what I do, but I was getting tired of 
working for someone else. So I decided to go out on my own, and it's been a very exciting couple of months, but also extremely daunting. Because with events planning, as I'm sure you'll know if you've even planned a small event with 10 people, getting everything together is really tough. There's so many task management platforms out there, but none of them are really geared specifically towards events. So I was really lucky when a fellow event planner actually found this app and recommended it to me. And I signed up a couple of days ago, it's brand new, and I've really, really been enjoying it so far. So I've arrived at work today, and I'm busy looking at my dashboard. Um, and what I really enjoy about the dashboard is that I can see all my events there, I can see the tasks across all the events for the upcoming week, and I can look at my calendar and see what the focus is for the next two weeks. There's a graduation for the wagon today, which is super important. And there's also a nice section where I can add some notes. Um, on that note, actually, I've checked the weekend weather and I need to alert the clients that it's not looking that good. Great. Um, I'm meeting with the future Mrs. James later this afternoon, so I'm going to search for the James wedding. And before I actually get into the dashboard, I'm just going to check my chat because I have a, a team member called Kate that's recently joined my team. And I asked her this morning if she's had any updates from Ms. James before I meet with her. And I can see there that, yes, they're looking to hire a mechanical bull for the reception. Very interesting, but who am I to judge? So I'm going to first check my expenses and just make sure that there's enough budget for it. And I can see that budget is looking fine. So I'm going to add it as an expense, a mechanical bull. And it's roughly around 10,000 rand. Um, it's still an estimated amount, but I can always edit it later. I just want to make sure that I've got it logged there. And I'm going to make it due for Wednesday, because all the expenses for the wedding need to be paid by Wednesday. I can see that it's now there. Great. I'm just going to add that as a task as well because I'm not going to have time to do it today. So I'd like to add the mechanical ball and it's for the reception. The category is going to be entertainment. I think it's going to be, yeah, very entertaining. And I'm going to make it due for today because we don't have a lot of time until the wedding. And I'm assigning it to Kate because I'm super busy. As you can see, I'm feeling very operational here. <laughs> and I just want to check the rest of my task. We found cowboy boots, so I'm going to mark that as done. Great. And now I can see my overdue tasks are looking good. So I think I can go back to my chat. And I'm just going to let Kate know that I've added as a, an expense and I've assigned the task to her because of, it's due today, so she needs to get on it. And I've really been enjoying the chat function because everything for this particular event is contained right here. Oh, great. I can see she's replied, so that's great. Now I'm going to go back to my client with this dashboard. It's a nice um, way for them to get an overview of where things are at get their head back into the wedding. Um, a lot, we can add a Pinterest board. The client sent us this, and we've added it in here just for some inspiration. And I can see my mechanical bull is now a part of the task for today, and it's assigned to Kate. So that's great. I think I'm happy with everything here on the dashboard. So I'm going to go back to my events dashboard. Because I know I've got an a, a ops workshop coming up on Monday, which I need to prepare for as well. Um, great. And I'm going to, I can see there that there's one invite that hasn't yet been sent. So I'm just going to go into my guests and just check who that is. I can see it's Jude, and we actually decided that we're no longer going to invite him. He's resigned. So what's the point? Um, and then I'm just going to go back to my overview because I'd like to add Adam 
who actually works for Hoya Operations, who we're organizing this event for, as a collaborator as well, um, so that he can also have an overview um, of what's happening. He can edit and update where necessary. Um, so I'm just going to message him quickly and also just let him know that I've added him and that he's welcome to play around on the platform and that I've removed Jude from the guest list. Perfect. So expenses are, are looking okay there. I think I'm ready for both my meetings this afternoon. And, yeah. and we have is the Lewagen graduation, which, yeah, we need to get back onto planning. You guys are all invited. And yeah, thank you. See you there. We had a little bit of a rocky start, I think, strong characters, but I feel like we really finished strong and everyone put in a lot of effort. So well done and thank you. And to Scooter and Marco, all the tickets that were not tickets, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, you guys have, yeah, we wouldn't definitely not have been able to do it without you. Thank you. All of this is built from complete scratch, nothing exists, and then this is the final product. It's not like, you know, they're taking Wix or, you know, some kind of um, software out there where they just plug and play. Um, it's literally built from scratch, from concept to design, to troubleshooting, to bug shooting, to layout and making the front tour pixels, no 14 pixels, and then having an argument about whether it should be maybe 13. Like, these are the kind of decisions and the kind of work that, that gets put in um, to making this happen. So, yeah, as I said, congratulations. You can be part of yourself. And I look forward to the uh, body, which Abigail has spent many weeks. <laughs> so, um, thank you for everyone for coming and for watching. We're going to head upstairs, have some drinks, have some chats. For those of you who are joining the batch um, in a few weeks' time, that's what you've got to live up to. All right. So, um, it's going to be a really great experience. And, yeah. Mingle with the, with the current students, ask them how it was, get some hints and tips on how best to um, kind of go about a rather intense but enlightening and very deeply fulfilling nine weeks. So thank you for your time, and I'll see you all upstairs. Ciao.